Happy Monday, Colleen Patrick Gaudreau here. I almost said ColleenPatrickGaudreau.com here. I am I did not change my name to a URL. Uh, happy Monday. I am here for you, vegan author, animal advocate. I'm here to answer your questions. I, uh, I, I'm going to challenge you to ask me a question I haven't answered yet uh, in my podcast, in my Food for Thought podcast, in my 30 Day Vegan Challenge program, in 30 Day Vegan Challenge book, in my vegan uh, POV videos on YouTube. I am going to challenge you to ask me a question I haven't been asked yet. Uh, but if you have asked, uh, if you have a question and you want it answered, something, anything related to veganism, food, uh, animals, uh, cats, whatever. Uh, not that I know everything, I certainly don't, but I am here for you and I will probably divert you over to other resources because uh, because I try in my work and I have tried in my work for the last 25 years to uh, guide people to manifest their compassion, to manifest their um, their their desire to be healthy and uh, and and answer these questions and guide them uh, through all the resources I provide. So shoot if you have any questions. I am working diligently on the uh, conference we have coming up. I know many of you probably already attended the Animal Rights Conference this past weekend. I don't tend to go to the DC conference just because I travel a bunch and I've been traveling a bunch back to the East Coast and it's just been really hard for me. Uh, to do that, but I do hope to get to the Animal Rights Conference in LA when they have it there next year. Also, I chose not to go. I mean, I could have made it happen, but all of my time and resources and energy and mind space is going into the conference that I'm putting on, and we've got 70 plus people signed up. Uh, we had about 70 people last year, so I'm looking uh, to have another fabulous event. Of course, there is still space available. The event is on August 26th, and it will... Um, <laughs> yes, Gary, you probably got me there. Um, and it will uh, it will be a fabulous event focusing on political engagement, advocacy, uh, framing our values, language. Uh, of course, you're not going to come to a conference that I put on and not uh, hear about language. And um, I'm actually going to be premiering some content at the conference around our language around animals that some of you probably heard bits of in the podcast, but not... Um, but not all of it. So I am looking forward to all of you joining us, and it's still we still have a nice uh, half price, um, uh, price, uh, because of uh, the, some some uh, very generous sponsors. So go check it out, compassioninactionconference.com. If you could write that down um, below, that would make it easier for people to link to. Again, www.compassioninactionconference.com. So. Questions from you. I've probably really set myself up ridiculously asking you to ask me questions I've never heard before. And this is going to be really pathetic. Um, hi, everybody. Good to see you here. Um, really good to see everyone here. Um, Katie says, you have been the inspiration uh, for me becoming vegan and staying vegan. Katie, tell me more about that. You know, I want to make sure that I'm giving people what they need. And I, you know, I have a good sense because of what I hear, I mean, luckily I get feedback and I see people's responses and I know what people are responding to and that thrills me. If there is anybody out there who's struggling, who has blocks to being vegan, they don't know what to do, this is your time to ask me questions. And of course, there's wonderful, fabulous people here as well who might be able to help. Kara, I am so bad. What I'm really bad at, and my husband could attest to this, I am horrible at remembering names of songs. I could sing them when I hear them, but I am notorious for um, for <laughs> kind of name like not misremembering or misquoting. Um, I love Public Enemy. I mean, I am like old school rap, so I am not up on a lot of contemporary music just because I am just I get stuck in my ways and I get stuck in the music that I like. And so when I turn to any kind of rap music, I mean, honestly, it's like you know, it's I mean it's like public enemy is like the first thing I could think of, but I also listen to a lot of old school like funk. And again, I am horrible at telling you the names of uh, songs. If you have songs that you could recommend to me that I should listen to, name them and I will absolutely go listen to them. I'm always open to new, to new sounds and new music. So I do. I mean, I love Nick Cave. I love low. I love, um, uh, who do I listen to a lot? I listen to, uh, um, 
God, I'm so, see, that's what I mean, I'm terrible. <laughs> I have to go back and like look at my, my uh, sound, my uh, um, Spotify playlist because I'm just terrible at, uh, at remembering who I love, who do I love. But yeah, you know, you, you know, the ones that I love the most, the ones you hear about all the time. Um, but I listen to a lot of old music. I listen to a lot of, um, uh, you know, I listen to opera. I listen to a lot of old spirituals. One of my, like, I was actually just listening to it yesterday is Roland Hayes. He was this old, um, um, spiritualist singer actually. And he was just incredible. I love listening to him. I listened to Paul Robeson. Um, uh, Marianne Anderson, um, you know, and then, you know, lots of different opera. Um, David and I, our go-to song, I should tell you that maybe someday someone will hear us. Um, when, well, friends have heard us, but our, David and I, when we go in the car and we take a road trip, it could be a quick road trip like it was yesterday, uh, just about 15 minutes or a longer one. The first thing we put in is uh, Midnight Train to Georgia. Um, that is our song, that is our duet, and maybe someday in a, uh, I don't know, in a drunken state, you, uh, and, and you're in person with me, you'll ha you'll witness our uh, our duet singing Midnight Train to Georgia, which is like our favorite song. And then we put on um, uh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, and then we put on like James Brown, and yeah, like that's what we usually, like that's our go-to playlist, and then some Van Morrison, because there's some awesome, um, songs that he covered and uh yeah so a variety of music but i need some i need some suggestions so Kara, go go like just yeah give me suggestions i love it um anyway so now you're seeing what how ridiculous i am thank you brandy this is a ring i got in ireland and uh has a long and sordid history i lost the ring after i bought it and it took me forever to decide to even buy this ring because i don't spend a lot of money on myself and i don't spend a lot of money on jewelry and it was ridiculous it was like four years ago when we were in ireland for the first time it was like the ring was like a hundred dollars and i i grappled for like like a half hour to like spend that kind of money on a ring because I never do that and David was like just buy the ring like this is ridiculous because <laughs> it's like I loved the ring so much and then I lost it and I was devastated and I loved the ring so much that I actually contacted the jewelers in Western Ireland because I remembered where we were we bought it and bought it again and they shipped it to me so this this ring is precious to me because of now how much money I've spent on it even though like you know as things go it's just a hundred dollars um, but that's me I'm silly like that um, Michael's block flying Stinging insects, wasps nets, nest outside my apartment door, constantly without poison, they just come back. Oh my gosh, so flying, stinging insects, sorry, I was like separating those words. Flying, comma, stinging insects. Wasp nests outside my apartment door. So you haven't, so have you, have you gotten any experts in to see if they could relocate or, you know, relocate the nest? Because sometimes experts can come and do that. Yeah, wasps can be pretty nasty. That's terrible, especially if it's like right outside your door. I would kill them all. I'm kidding. Everybody calm down. Don't quote me now. You're going to quote me on that. Um, no, there's, there's some people who I know who, who can relocate the nests. Uh, I wonder if there are certain things that are making that area really appealing to wasps. Uh, I wonder if you could maybe put a brighter light in on the porch or wherever, or some kind of uh, humming noise, you know, something that would disrupt them and not want to nest there, but maybe nest somewhere else. I am not an expert at all am on flying, stinging insects, but these are the just things that are coming to my to my mind. I wonder, um, I wonder what can happen. Uh, I wonder what what. If, if those things are possible and would, you know, because if you found out what um, things are really noxious to wasps, you might be able to set up a very noxious environment for them. You know, like I said, either a certain kind of noise that they don't like or a certain color or certain light that they might not like. Uh, perhaps there's things you can do to attract uh, insects that would eat the wasps. So, you know, kind of making it just not appealing for them because they're going to get eaten. So they don't want to be there. So I wonder if there's some ways to do that.
Um, Anne says, recovering from surgery and difficult to cook for myself. Poor pumpkin, I'm sorry. Uh, relying on kindness of people who make meals for me and they don't know what to make. Ah, what are some simple suggestions? It's hard for me to ask people to go out of their way for me. I'm so grateful and you got cut off, but I, I think I got the sense um, of what you're asking. Let me see if there's just a continuation. I think I got the sense of what you're saying. Um, so I would say, first of all, I want to just reframe it. If people are asking you if they could help you, just accept the help. So I know a lot of us struggle with that. I understand. I can relate to that. But if someone's asking for help, to help you, just um, know that it's a gift to them to accept their help because they're genuinely saying, I want to do something because you're in a vulnerable position and I want to be able to give back to you. So, so give them the gift of giving to you. Okay. So don't be all, you know, Oh, I can't accept it. Just accept it. Number one. And so in accepting it, Anne, it might make it easier for you to ask for what you want, you know? So, uh, so as far as, you know, simple dishes, I mean, you know, I would give them recipes, just like simple recipes, but you could do really simple things like, you know, I think lentils are the most simple, warming, healing foods, and people can make those pretty easily without being any kind of expert in cooking. So, you know, you know, telling them they could just make something simple like a doll, like a yellow doll or a red lentil doll, where they're just literally putting, you know, red lentils with water and maybe a veggie bo broth cube, like a bouillon cube, and, you know, you know, cutting up some carrots and maybe a potato and some celery, and then just putting cumin and some coriander. Like, you can give them really simple suggestions like that. Um, ask them what their favorite dishes are. You know, I, I understand that not everybody who's cooking for you is probably vegan, but ask them what kinds of dishes they make that they that would be easy for them and then maybe you can tweak it so if they say something like oh you know my go-to dish is like um you know pasta with with meat sauce and that's what i want to you know that's what i would be able to make for you say oh well that's easy could you make pasta with you know a vegetarian meat sauce that i could recommend to you or like a vegetarian meat that I could recommend. Or you might just say, you know, it's fine if you just give me the sauce. Most, you know, most just pasta sauces that don't have meat in them, obviously, you know, or obviously cheese in them, uh, would be vegan. So asking for like an arbiata or a tomato and basil. Uh, so, so, so maybe start with where they are and see how you might be able to just tweak what they're already familiar with. Does that help? Does that make sense? Um, Angela says, we know you love DKB. I saw that. So Michael says, I hate having the arbitrary species this line, but I don't know what else to do. Michael, I don't think that's arbitrary. I don't think that's arbitrary. If you're talking about how you don't want to, you know, be stung when you leave your house, that's called, you know, you have a survivor's instinct. <laughs> like you don't want to be hurt. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself, but I would just find out if there's other ways to go about, um, you know, it's not just like leave them and let them, uh, you know, allow yourself to be a victim of wasp stings or poison them. I think there's something in between that you might have missed. Uh, Katie says, I think it's great you're doing these live Facebook feeds and your podcasts are spot on to give advice and make you do and make you uh, feel more welcome. Well, thank you, Katie. I do love, I love connecting with you guys. But the thing I feel really guilty about is that there are other social mediums that I do want to uh, contribute to in different ways, including Instagram. And it's just one of these things where I just find it so hard. I can't do both. I did get a second phone. A friend of mine gave me an old phone of hers. I would have to get another setup, like the tripod I have this on right now, just to make it easy for me and then be able to do two. If you have any suggestions, let me know. But I really wish I could cut two carrots with one knife or hit two cans with one stone because uh, because it's hard for me to then leave you and then go do a whole other Instagram live video. So I wish I could do more. Um, so, okay. Kara's giving me some suggestions. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Hey, Liv. Good to see you. Um, what book am I reading right now? Actually, Brandy, that's a very good question. Um, I'm actually reading Afroism right now by Af and Sil Co, which is, I don't have the entire book with me. Maybe someone could look it up right now and put the book there and the subtitle. Um, but it's about, um, black veganism and black vegans and, and how, you know, vegans can be more inclusive and how, it's problematic when we do certain things that we think is being inclusive and intersectional. Uh, and I am learning so much from them. I think they're brilliant. And I'm really, uh, I'm really grateful for them putting this book together. It's a lantern book. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. And then I got a fiction book from a friend who knows I 
so so yeah so then I have this whole other side where well I don't read a lot of fantasy fiction but I did read a Game of Thrones and you know years ago I read Mist of Avalon I don't read a ton of fantasy but she just recommended it's called um, it's part of this Killer King series and Patrick something and uh, what's it called it's called I can't remember. I just blah. I just blah. Anyway, she just gave it to me, and I haven't started it yet. But it's like I carry it around with me because as soon as I finish Aphorism, I'm going to read that. So I do tend to vacillate back and forth between fiction and nonfiction. I just fed. I just read Fire Next Time uh, by James Baldwin. I recommend um, follow me on Goodreads if you're interested because I do try to keep um, my my reading list on there and I keep it updated. Um, I'm not a big Rolling Stones fan. I'm not. Like, I like a couple other songs, but I'm not, like, a huge Rolling Stones fan. Um, Kirsten says, hello, Kirsten. Would love to hear your duet that's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, like, we've got, like, a whole, we've got, like, a whole thing, like, with our duet. Like, kind of the whole movement. Now, like, we don't do a dance thing because we're sitting in the car, but there are some particular movements that we do on the song, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's pretty adorable. He's my adorableness. Um, Elizabeth, hello, Elizabeth. Um, Eva Cassidy, love her music. Also, Nancy Griffith. I love that you guys are giving me suggestions. Thank you. Julie says, you are an amazing person. I'm so glad you're fighting the same, um, to be fighting the same fight as you. Thank you, Julie. I'm sure you're an amazing person as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, like Drake. I haven't listened to any Drake, and that's like stupid, right? Like, I just need to do that. Yeah, okay, I've done. Jackie says, my mom is battling ovarian cancer. I'm so sorry, Jackie. And I'm having trouble getting her to believe that her diet can uh, impact her health. Her doctors keep telling her to eat a high-protein diet, including deli meat and dairy, whenever I try to send her resources to learn about a plant-based diet. And you're getting um, cut off there again, Jackie. Y'all get cut off unless I'm on, on the actual laptop, so I don't see a continuation. But I think I, I have the gist here. Um... So listen, I've, I've, I've talked about this before, um, and there was a podcast episode where I was talking to someone about this in particular. I'm just going to say it's hard, um, especially when our loved ones are suffering from a disease that we believe and that there has been indication that would improve or be reversed potentially by changing our diet. And I'm going to ask you to do the hardest thing you could do, which is you need to let go because your mother knows where the information is when she's ready to receive it because you've told her that you're the one who has information because you want to help her. But the more you become attached to this particular information getting across to her, the more frustrated you're going to be, the more she's going to pull away, the more she's going to feel like she's disappointing you, the more you're going to feel like she's disappointing you. And the more pressure you put on is, I just don't think healthy for either one of you. That is not to say that we should not and cannot provide our loved ones with information uh, about what we have learned is contributes to optimal wellness and once we let them know that we have this information that we'd love to share with them we need to let go because it just creates this kind of conflict so when you have the power to cook for her and share this with her and take her out and go to her and see her then by all means provide that delicious food for her um, but if she's not willing to take the information, then you've got your answer. And again, this is the case with anyone who's in any situation where a loved one has a particular ailment and they don't want information from you, particularly you, because their doctor is the one they trust. So, um, you know, again, let her know that you are there for her and you have information you'd love to talk to her about and you'd love inf you'd love to talk to her doctors about it if she wants to do it with you. But, sh but more than that, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and you're setting her up for disappointment because she's disappointing you by not doing what you say and it just creates this whole cycle. So uh, does that help? I know it probably doesn't but um but it's real it's it's hard and uh 
you know, but that is all we can do. We need to know where we end and another person begins because in the end we can't force someone to do what we want them to do. But I bet that when you back up a little bit and if you back off a little bit and you just say, I love you, mom, and I'm doing this because I love you and I have information that I think would be really beneficial for you and when you're ready to accept it, I am here to give it to you. Because short of that, uh, it just becomes a battle for you to win. And I don't mean that in a in a judgmental way, but that's what's happening right now and that's where, what, what it's turned into. So I wish you well and I wish your mother well and I'll definitely keep her in my thoughts. Um, so, um, I don't know what sense they hate, Brandy. That's what I'm saying. I think we need some more information about what, uh, what wasps don't like. And, um, MJ is providing information that Humane Gardener has a blog on it. They're territorial, so there are fake nests you can put up. I love that. And again, if you all haven't listened to the podcast episode, the Food for Thought podcast episode I did with Nancy Lawson, uh, who is the author of The Humane Gardener, and I don't care if you garden or not, it's really about making the most humane, compassionate choices living in this world. Listen to the episode and go buy her book. It's really fantastic. Uh, Liv says, did you hear about the guy in Texas who shot an armadillo on his property three times and one of the bullets ricocheted back and hit him in the face? He's wounded and not dead, so I thought the story was quite amusing. The armadillo is not found. You have to say more, Liv. I can't see the rest of it. You're going to have to like maybe paste just the last part of that in after the armadillo is not found and then and then go on. Um, uh, Brandy's asking about freezer meals. Anne says, yes, thank you. Good, good, good. I'm going to come back. I'm looking through, so I just make sure I'm covering everybody. Any thoughts about... Um, T-shirts as activism, okay. Marie Eve says, hi, Colleen, we made your marvelous mushroom risotto for dinner today. I replaced, um, uh, do, 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 do. I replaced the arborio rice with barley and the truffle oil by, um, with black garlic. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love that. But first of all, I just love truffle oil. I'm just getting excited about that. That sounds awesome. Hey, Lisa. Um, Angela says Michael looks like Mike, uh, Angela's giving Michael some suggestions. So if y'all are interested, um, definitely look below to see other suggestions about um, wasps. Um, Kara's asking what laws should we support? Okay, let me, let me let me just, I'm scrolling through just to make sure I cover everybody here and doing the best I can. Uh, hi there, follow you constantly. I just went vegan a month ago, going strong, and I thank you for all your knowledge and advice. Yay, Alicia. And I want to make sure everybody knows about the support group that's here on Facebook. It's the 30 Day Vegan Challenge support group. It's growing. It's got over 4,000 members. Last time I looked, it's probably more by now. You can request to, um, to join. Uh, there are guidelines to follow. And the guidelines, in short, are be kind. That's kind of it in a nutshell. Michael, who is asking about the wasps, is one of the moderators, and he is amazing. He is just amazing. So you're in really good hands over that support group. So if you haven't joined that, uh, I really encourage everybody to do so and be kind. Um, the book is good. I highly recommend it. Uh, again, Afroism. Um, Michael says, I just brought Afroism too. Haven't started yet, but it's next up. It's great. It's great. Um, and Kara's asking a lot of questions, best dating advice, be more specific, Kara. What are you asking for specifically about that? Uh, really excited. Michael says about reading Afroism, currently listening to Sarah, uh, to Sister Vegan, an anthology edited by Breeze Harper. Indeed, Breeze lives right here in Berkeley. Well, I'm not in Berkeley. She's in Berkeley. I'm in Oakland, but she lives, um, close by. She's a neighbor. Uh, Leah says, hi, Colleen, you're amazing. Gosh, thank you, everybody. I don't know if I'm amazing. Um, I'm so proud to have learned all the things, uh, all things vegan from an amazing mentor guide like you. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you. Um, Kara's asking about eating more, uh, making more nutritious meals. I eat out too much or too much junk food. Okay, great. And I'm at the end here, so I'm going to go back and answer. So that was it. The armadillo guy was not found, so presumably okay. Or the armadillo was not found, so presumably okay. The guy is not, which I thought was fair. As some said, man, mano, oh, man zero, armadillo one. And Jackie says, thank you so much for such heartfelt advice. It was extremely helpful. I'm glad, Jackie. I know it's not easy to hear that, but thank you. I'm, I'm, I hope it helps. I don't know the answer but I hope that helps. Uh, ideas to get people to veg fest. They're not vegan yet. Okay. So, some, so let me just go through and so I'll answer some of these. Um, so, uh, as far as, uh, more nutritious meals. Yeah. I mean, if you're eating out, so my advice, if you're eating out too much, stop. 
if you're eating too much junk food, stop. I will say that one of the things that I know for myself that really works, you know, when you think about behavior, right, and something you're trying to change and something you're trying to not do, you can either avoid or you can resist. And I find avoidance Maybe it's not the 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 most uh, you know moral of the choices because you're not um, tempting yourself and then resisting and and would we become better stronger people if we do that? I don't care. That's not what I'm looking for. If I'm trying to avoid potato chips, I would rather avoid them rather than resist them. So I make it easy on myself. I don't have that food in the house. And I love potato chips. They are so damn good. Salt and fat is just delicious. I love all of that stuff. That, you know, I do. Uh, but I don't have it in the house. I mean, I don't eat that much. I don't, I don't eat that much junk food. But I mean, of course, who's going to deny that potato chips are great? Like potato chips are ridiculously good. So I just don't keep potato chips in the house. And David, you know, David and I have this agreement as well. He, he's the same way. Now, David has different foods that he considers, you know, that are hit, that he loves that I consider just empty calories. And they're it's too tempting for me. Like when he buys these beautiful loaves of bread, I just want to eat the whole loaf of bread. And he does too. And he usually does. <laughs> so, so I'm like, just get the bread away. Actually, I like when he buys sourdough bread or bread with olives. Cause I don't love my, I don't love olives in my bread because I can resist it more easily. So all I'm saying is keep in your house the things that are more nutrient dense and keep out of your house the things that are more tempting for you. And for me, like I said, it's like potato chips. Um, I just don't keep them in the house because I would eat them. And so to avoid eating them, I just avoid having them in my house. And so nutri nutritious meals, just like, you know, again, you know, you know, we rotate the same meals again and again, find a couple meals that are really n like nutrient dense for you that are filling for you. For me, I love polenta. It's a really quick go-to meal. You know, polenta is definitely nutritious, but, uh, especially if you compare it to something like white pasta. So I kind of treat polenta as some people would treat pasta and that's where I just put tons of vegetables um, on it. I love mushrooms on polenta but I'll saute anything, saute kale and mushrooms and other vegetables and and top that, uh, top my polenta with that. So that's kind of one of my nutritious go-to meals. You know I chop a lot of vegetables in advance to be able to have salads more easily. That's one of the things that I think is a real block for people is if we don't have the vegetables already prepared we tend to just make poor decisions because we wait until we're hungry, we open the refrigerator and all the carrots are intact and the celery is intact and the pepper is intact and we don't want to chop the vegetables. So chopping the vegetables in advance definitely makes a difference. So those are, those are my suggestions for you. Um, uh, so what else, what else, what else? Freezer meals, Brandy? I don't know. I'm not a big freezer person. I tend to be someone who loves leftovers. So I'll make, a, you know, a big vat of soup or stew or something and kind of eat it over the next few days. But that's an example. You know, I always talk about planning ahead, planning in advance, making more than what you need so that you have leftovers or so in this case you could have, you could freeze the the food. So make a big pot of soup and then put it in, you know, put half of it in the freezer, have some for lunch the next day. But if you, you know, but, but plan to have more and put it in the freezer. Same thing with casseroles, same thing with lentil dishes, with bean dishes, you know, just make larger quantities of the things that you are already making. It's just so much easier to make a larger batch than to two days in a row make dinner. So always think ahead and, and, you know, so many things freeze really well, uh, period. Does that help? Um, um, any thoughts about message t-shirts as activism? Yeah, MJ, I mean, I think, I think we're, we're, especially now we're at a time when we're not really engaging with each other as much as we used to because our phones have taken us away from personal interactions. And I find it really sad because I love talking to people and I love talking to strangers and I love having these um, accidental encounters with people that we didn't plan. I love those. And one of the ways we can do that is through t-shirts. I tend to be someone who doesn't wear a lot of message. Um, I, I don't wear a lot of message wear, uh, just because it's, I don't know. I, some of it is when I go out in public, I kind of want to retreat a little. I, I tend to be, I know this might be surprising to a lot of you, but I am a little introverted and I, I don't like to call attention to myself when I'm out in public. And so, so I tend not to wear something that's going to call attention to me, which is, you know, a shirt with a message on it. 
but that that varies. It's not I'm not always 100% like that. I have my joyful vegan shirts and uh you know, for me it's not like a message. It doesn't say go vegan. I don't ever say go vegan, but just wearing a shirt that says go uh, joyful vegan, I have had people um say something to me. And I love that. You know, I have bumper stickers on my car and I have had people say things to me uh because of them and I I love that. So, I'm I, I'm probably contradicting myself a little bit because I say that I love these accidental encounters and then I don't wear shirts that would probably stimulate those encounters. But I don't know. I, so I think if you're comfortable wearing those shirts and you're comfortable with the encounter that you're going to get, then then by all means wear them. There are so many shirts out these days. There are so many different kinds of shirts. Um, and I would wear the shirts and wear the shirts that have the messages that reflect your kind of activism. You know, Herbivore has so many shirts. Some of them are sassy and some of them make me laugh, but I would never wear a shirt that says, what kind of asshole eats lamb? Like I could never... I could never wear that shirt because it's not my rhetoric. It's not my activism. Not that I don't swear because I do swear. You just never hear me swear. And saying asshole in that context isn't swearing. I'm quoting a shirt. Um, I swear all the time. But so it's not about that. It's about, you know, I could never say that. Um, jokingly with my friends and jokingly with people, even neighbors and acquaintances, I could probably say it, but not on a shirt where it's out of context and I can't explain myself. So if it's comfortable for you to wear that, then by all means do. Uh, and there are, there's a huge spectrum of, of messages out there that I think would reflect everybody's, uh, tone. So, uh, so have at it. Absolutely. Um, I'm reading, hold on. I'm just doing Reading more. Okay, you guys are chatting. Do you eat many sweets, says Lynn? I've gotten away from them. Yeah, I, um, I will definitely say that my taste buds changed. And they changed, they continue to change. My taste buds change. Um, I, I do like sweets, but I can resist sweets. So I love chocolate, but I can have a little piece of chocolate and then put it away and kind of have more later. Um, there are some things that I can't have in the house because I, or I make David hide them if he buys them. And that's something like the, um, the salted almonds covered in chocolate from Trader Joe's, for instance, they are too good. I will eat the entire thing. So I just resist them. And I just tell if David comes home with them. I tell him to hide them because I just don't want to know where they are. So he'll bring me down a handful and I'm like, thank you. That's all I want. When we go to a restaurant, you know, I, when I go to a restaurant and it's, you know, we go out maybe once or twice. I want to say twice a week. Sometimes it just happens because I have a lot of meetings with people and we do meetings at restaurants. It's just easier. Uh, so it winds up being a couple times a week. I will try and eat the way that it re is reflected on how I eat at home. And so I don't get dessert every time I go out. Ice cream, I used to probably buy a lot more. But again, I don't because I just don't want the added calories. So I do love the, you know, what do they call it? Nice cream, whatever. The frozen bananas. And I mean, I've been doing that for decades where, you know, you just uh, take frozen bananas and you make this wonderful creamy uh, concoction and uh, and add dates or something like that. So that's where usually I get my sweetness is from fruits, is from dates. But I am not a purist by any means. I do. I was at Millennium with a friend I hadn't seen in a while. And uh, sometimes it's annoying because they'll gift me with some treats that I did not order. Uh, it's very kind and generous of them. But I order, we just ordered a chocolate cake between the two of us. And it was unbelievably delicious and then they brought us also a uh a trifle a strawberry trifle and i was like no i ordered just one dessert on purpose and again now that you put it in front of me now i have to resist which is a lot harder than avoiding it so yeah so i'm human that's all um and 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 my taste buds i was saying my taste buds change like if i get if i get a you know an ice cream a vegan ice cream I, sometimes I find them too sweet and I, I, cause I just, I'm so used to, again, you know, kind of the bananas or something like that. So I prefer the bananas and I'd rather put my own treats in it, but I'm not, I'm not saying that I am, uh, beyond the, that I, that I don't have the, I do not have the strength to resist, say the salted caramel, uh, cluster or whatever it's called from so delicious. I'm not like the cashew um, milk ice cream. I'm not, I don't have the strength. I can't do it. So if you put that in front of me, I, I probably couldn't resist it. Um, I visited Bobby says Skyland's, um, animal sanctuary, uh, in, uh, Wantage, New Jersey. I have never heard of Wantage. Where the heck is Wantage, Bobby? And I got to hug some cows and pigs and I thought of you. 
That's so awesome. I want to go there. So actually, we have some friends coming into town from LA on Friday, and they're staying the weekend. And we already have plans to go up to Farm Sanctuary. I haven't been there in several months, and I have to see my babies, Linus and Sierra and Waylon and Dawn. I just miss them so much. So I'm going to go hug some cows and pigs and donkeys and goats this weekend, and I'm very excited. So I'm really glad you got to do that. That's awesome. Um, Leah says, thankfully, since I learned all things vegan from you, I see this life through abundance. But unfortunately, many see it through a lens of restriction and deprivation. True, but you, you know, you're framing it, Leah. So I'm talking about that in my, you know, in my, in the conference we're doing. It is all about framing. You own that frame. You keep owning that frame. And the more you keep owning that frame, the more that will strengthen that frame in other people's minds. So you keep talking about the abundance and the joy in living vegan and that will start to alter people's perception of it. It just will. Don't do it for that reason. Do it because it's the truth for you and that is what people will respond to. And it's a beautiful thing and I'm sure you've seen that as well. Um, Lynn says, um, I like a bite of dark chocolate or frozen bananas like you one in a, once in a while for sure. Um, I've tried so many recipes from your baking cookbook. My hubby could eat sweets anytime, every day, just a treat now and then. Yeah, for me, it's just annoying because, um, yeah, there are people who can just, um, you know, eat all that and never gain weight. That's not, that's not my life. I would gain weight if I, if I ate all the treats from my Joy Vegan Baking book or if I, uh, if I ate all that salted caramel ice cream, it's just, it's just the truth. So I just avoid it. Um, how to keep the love fresh. Are you talking about with my husband and I? I actually have a video on how we have sustained our relationship over 20 something years. And, uh, and it is a conscious, decision that we do that. We, um, we absolutely are imperfect and we have pissed each other off and we fight and, um, I can be a pain in the butt. And, uh, and I think for us, we would say that a lot of what holds us together is our first of all, desire to want to make the other person happy and feel loved. And also that we like each other a lot. Like I really like David and that goes a long way in loving somebody. So I actually have a YouTube video on um, on how we have sustained our relationship over these years. So check it out. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Mecca says, have you met any vegan celebrity like Matthew Kenny? Yes, I have met vegan celebrities, uh, indeed. I mean, if you want to, whatever. I mean, when you say vegan celebrity, I assume you mean people who are high profile. I would, I, I would never have thought of Matthew Kenny as a, uh, um, a vegan celebrity. I think, you know, for me, when I meet the people who are probably considered vegan celebrities to other people, these are my friends and colleagues, and uh, I don't get starstruck uh, by people. I really don't. I mean, I would probably be starstruck more by, um, I don't know, who would I be starstruck by? Oh, who was I starstruck? I mean, I was starstruck by, yeah, like the creator of an animated television show that I really like. That's like a really obscure show. And uh, it's called Super Mansion. And I love it. And I, um, oh, starstruck is the word, but I went down to the studios and met the writer and the creator of that show and was just, just, you know, really tickled to be able to meet him. So uh, yeah, I mean, so obviously it's not Archer. It's actually Rise. It's another animated show. It's more of a stop motion. It's uh, Supermansion. Brian Cranston does the main voice. It's kind of like a parody on superheroes, um, and it's just hilarious. So um, uh, Keegan Michael Key does one of the voices, or he does a couple of the voices. Brian Cranston does the main voice. Um, and uh, who else? I feel like there's somebody else who's done some voices. I think Chris Pine does one of the voices, but you would never know it. And uh, I just, it's just the funniest show. It is so well written. And uh, I get really excited about writers and creators and filmmakers and um, yeah, like producers of content. Like that's what gets me really excited. So I, I kind of geek out on that stuff a bit. Yeah, it's called Super Mansion. It was on the um, Crackle Network, but we get it. We yeah, we I, I David gets the episodes because we don't have cable. But um, it's called Super Mansion, and it's pretty 
freaking awesome. If you like Archer, you would like Super Mansion. And just get through like the first couple episodes because you just get to know the characters and the characters really find themselves and they're they're so quotable. They're so awesome. Um, anyway, I'm geeking out a little bit. <laughs> Um, Angela says, I hope that we will get to see some new pics of you with Linus. Oh my God, I hope so. Yes, the, the plan is to get some more pictures with these babies, absolutely. Liv says, I still haven't watched What the Health, but you were obviously involved since the Facebook group membership has exploded, how? So um, if you're asking about how that exploded, um, it's because um, from Cowspiracy's website and from the What the Health website, if you go to Take Action, the 30-Day Vegan Challenge is the option that people can, um, is, the, is the option. They've added something on What the Health. They have their own meal plan as well. Um, but So there's two options now. But basically, after people watch What the Health or Cowspiracy and they go to those websites, people can sign up for the 30-Day Vegan Challenge, uh, the free version through their website. Um, it doesn't have all the content that the online program has that I offer, which is a paid program. But be, but it's because it's free. I want to obviously cr continue to have value for the people who are paying for the online version. But it has a lot of the content, so that's how people are finding uh, uh, the thirty day vegan challenge and then joining the group. That's why it's exploded. Um, Mecca says I've been vegan for ten years, celebrating that milestone in November. Congratulations, Mecca. That's really lovely. Um, Rise says five love languages good for helping understand our lovers. Yeah, a lot of people really uh, use that book. I read the book. It, you know, it, some of it resonated with me. I thought it was interesting, and I think it's something that people could use also for um, for other relationships, not even just romantic ones. Did I just say romantic? I sound like I'm from New Jersey. Romantic. Um, and yeah, so definitely check it out. So did I get everybody's questions here? Stony pretzels, yay! Um, Leah says, um, Colleen, I struggle with an eating disorder in high school and I'd love to shed light on why the keeping food you love out of the house attitude can really be dangerous for anyone who has negative relationships with food. So let me read that again so I understand it. I'd love to shed light on why the keeping food you love out of the house attitude can really be dangerous for anyone who has negative relationships with food. Sure, Leah, definitely share that with me. Um, I would be definitely interested in, in hearing that. So please send any information my way. Um, uh, Marie Eve says, who can I start talking to on your team to start planning you coming to Montreal for a conference in the near future? Um, reach out to support at joyfulvegan.com. Marie Eve, and thanks for um, even considering that. And Mecca asked if I'm a gluten-free vegan. I am not. I am a gluten-full vegan. I am indeed. Um, Melinda says, your chocolate chip cookies are my weakness. I add vegan marshmallows to them. Oh my God, they're so good. Oh my God. And Bobby, is it Sussex County? It sounds like, um... Uh, yeah, awesome. MJ says, Veg Fest ideas for getting people there that aren't vegan yet. You know, some of it can be done. I think people respond to challenges. So, um, I would, I, I think giveaways and challenges and like, you know, I don't know how much this works, but this is an example. Millennium Restaurant has a, um, a, a kind of enticement where it's called bring a carnivore. It's called bring a carnivore. This is how they phrase it. I don't, I don't like to use the word carnivore to refer to um, human humans who make the choice to eat other animals because, for me, carnivore is more is a biological, physiological um, imperative. It's not uh, an ethic. It's not an ethical choice, or it's a choice or a choice. So I'm just explaining that because this is their language, but it's called bring a carnivore. And when you do, you get a discount. So I think those kinds of things really resonate with people. So people who come, if they're not vegan, like encouraging people who come who are not vegan, who get a prize or who en who get entered to win a prize and make the prize pretty good um, is what I recommend. Like make the prize a really good one. I think those kinds of things could incentivize people. Certainly food incentivizes people. Uh, but does that make sense? Like doing some kind of giveaways, doing some kind of, you know, um, uh, challenge for them, I think is, uh, I think is, uh, I think helps. Do you believe that we'll ever have a vegan chef to have its own cooking show, for example, like the Food Network, Other Network? Well, Mecca, you know, I think, I think the problem with the question is that it makes the Food Network, you know, or the cooking channel or whatever, be the, you know, the bastion of, of the message and the carrier of the message. I guess I would say they're 
uh, they're going to create, so, so yes, possibly is my short answer, but they're going to create content that they think is going to be the content that their demographic responds to. And it's, it's always going to be the case. This is television that is driven by economics and they're going to either dumb down what would be, uh, you know, valuable information because they think they have to for their audience, or they're only going to target a an audience that they think is going to be the largest audience to be able to make their money back, their advertising dollars, whatever. So, so do I think it's impossible? So my short answer is n like, no, I don't think it's crazy that there would be a vegan um, show. I mean, there has been, I mean, they had token vegans on, <laughs> but um, you know, the cooking show, the cooking channel had, um, Jason Robel, who's a dear friend, and they, you know, he was on for, I guess, a season. And, you know, I mean, so I think it has to be the right show and the right tone and the right people to, to, but I would say there's so much opportunity to create content for people that the answer these days isn't anymore just going to the one um, network that, you know, that has been status quo for so many years. YouTube, you know, has been creating amazing content and there's amazing content creators on there that people are watching. Yeah. Um, uh, hot for food. Uh, Michael is saying, I think there's just a lot of potential for content. I think we, I think we, if we only, if we only look at having a vegan show on the food network as success, then we're missing all of the opportunity for other ways to create a really quality content for, um, for the public outside of this one way of doing it. Does that make sense? Hold on, excuse me. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Uh, but that's, I always have a long answer. I can never just say, um, yes, yes. Um, and uh, Mecca is, what was your reaction to Daya? Uh, since three weeks, they made their announcement that they're selling their products to a uh, Japanese company. I said in another episode that um, I think uh, I think it's great. I, I, I have uh, no problem with it. I think that the more uh, people who have access to, um, I shouldn't say I have no problem with it. Let me clarify, because people are gonna be like, you have no problem with it. Um, that the more people have access to f f foods that have typically been, uh, you know, in niche markets and foods that, d d you know, don't, con that aren't animal based is a good thing. I don't want to be part of an exclusive club. I do not agree that day is sold out. I don't look at it that way. Um, and I saw someone, I don't remember who it was, I saw on some page somewhere, which I actually agree with, and I'm going to end with this, is that Daya didn't sell out, that the company who, who bought them bought in. And I agree with that, because the more companies recognize that there is money to be made in vegan foods and animal-free foods, the, the more this food is going to become accessible and affordable for everybody. And that's what we want. We don't want to have companies that are so small that they can't distribute, that they can't grow. I mean, there are going to be some companies that stay in business as they are, and they're going to keep infusing money back into the business, like Tofurky, like food, you know, uh, Follow Your Heart. Those are amazing companies. But I don't agree that a company like Daya, um, who sells it to a company that's going to be able to spread their um, products more, is selling out. I think the companies are selling, are buying in to what they recognize as a viable business, because in the end. Even people like Follow Your Heart and Tofurky, it's a business and they have to make decisions that are going to keep them in business, period. That's just the way it is. That's called, you know, it's, it's capitalism, it's economics, and some people don't think that's a good thing. You know, some people just don't think capitalism is good at all. It happens to be what it looks like, you know, with no judgment on it. And to deny that is, uh, is just to deny reality. Uh, we can't, you know, we can't live by idealism alone. Um, we, we, we do in a way have to play on the, um, the playing ground that's already there. We can do so ethically. We can make the best choices and we as consumers can make the best choices, but I don't think it's the best use of our resources and time to criticize and boycott Dea. I just think there's better ways to spend our time. And that's my opinion. Uh, yeah. So Tasha, exactly. I, um, I mentioned Jason's show on the cooking channel. 
which was a great, which was a great, um, which was a great show. And Jason's doing more stuff on, on his own channel and on YouTube. He's doing some really fun things. So you can still go check out his work. So, um, I hope that makes sense, everybody. Uh, I don't have all the answers. I have as many questions as you do. And I just hope that, uh, that you, uh, that you always take that into consideration. I'm certainly not trying to have all the answers to these things. And, um, you know, we're all just doing the best we can, including a company, uh, like Daya. So, um, my kitties are awesome. Thank you, Mecca. I, okay, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you how awesome one is. There being awesome. This is Peanut and this is Poo. This is this is Poo right there. This is Beebe's. And then there's another one. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> Did not mean to be that zoomed in. Um, and then we have Charlie right there. So this whole time, Charlie has been with me, and Michiko has been with me. And thanks, Lynn. Glad that helped. And she's looking at me because she's cute. What are you doing, Michiko? What are you doing? Um, yeah, we see your. She's like halfway, like cleaning her belly, so her legs still lifted up. What's with your leg? Keep licking. Nobody's stopping you. Beady. Yeah, I appreciate that, Angela. I really do. I appreciate that honesty because I think that's the mistake. And I and I talk about this when I talk about I, I talked about this on a YouTube episode um, a while ago. But I, I I think that's right. If we think that these companies are in it because they're doing it for, um, uh, you know, idealistic reasons, then we're going to be disappointed. Sorry, that just got messed up there. Um, we're going to be disappointed. And I think that's the bottom line is that we have to be realistic. Now, that doesn't mean we have to support every single company. If there are companies that we don't want to support, that's fine. Like, there are, you know, there are certain things I don't buy. There are certainly companies I don't buy from. But that's different than boycotting it. That's different than, like, going on this rant. That's different. I mean, there are so, like, the vegan companies who do this are just low-hanging fruit because we think we have access to them so we can criticize them more than we criticize the companies that are actually having the worst impact and the most impact negatively on animals. The bottom line is the companies that are responsible for killing, bringing into this world only to kill billions of animals every year are the problem. And I think that's where we need to focus our attention rather on the vegan companies who are selling to another company who realizes they could make money from vegan food and they're going to distribute that food even more widely and can keep the, get the prices lower. So so that more people have access to those vegan foods and fewer people will eat the products that are responsible for killing billions of animals a year. That's my opinion. And that's all I have to say. Um, so I am going to <laughs> go. Um, I, oh God, Meech, go. She's being cute. She was just being cute, Meech. What are you doing? Oh, she was just being cute, even cuter. And now she stopped it. Um, so that's all I have to say. I am going to get some dinner for myself, and then my friend is coming over to watch Game of Thrones. We didn't watch it last night because we're watching it together. Don't give me any spoilers. I'm going to watch it myself. So um, have a lovely evening, everybody. Thank you. Share this video. It's never too late to share this video. You can put it on your Facebook. You can embed it, I think, on your Facebook um, page. And uh, Michael, if you want to put this on the third day vegan challenge support group i would appreciate it you're awesome lynn thanks everybody have a wonderful night riza and i'm so sorry riza i i know about the loss of your kitty and i'm so sorry that must have been incredibly difficult and my my thoughts are with you and um you're in my heart so um thanks everybody and there is more cuteness to be had right here right there michiko and tali bye everybody for the animals <laughs> this is Colleen Patrick Cadreau. Thank you for watching.